This video is designed to introduce what your textbook calls the big ideas in biology. The first one is honestly my favorite. It's called Science as a Way of Knowing. It's basically saying that it's more important to comprehend the big ideas than it is to memorize the facts and the small details. I try to teach this biology class to reflect this particular concept from the textbook. It's far more important for me that you understand like the, a working definition for terms. If you can define things in your own words, that's far more impressive to me than if you sit down and like memorize things. So definitely, uh, this class is all built around comprehension, and that will serve you well in biology all year. The next one is the concept of evolution, and in a lot of ways, this is sort of like the absolute climax of our course. Everything we talk about ends up building to the idea of evolution. Once we get to that chapter near the end of the year, we actually cover evolution in the fourth quarter, it ties together many of the concepts that we've talked about all year long. What we'll discuss under this is that all life on the planet goes back to some ancestor dating about three and a half billion years ago. I've got the image of the shark on here because sharks are some of the most ancient species on the planet. They've been alive for billions of years. And the most interesting thing about this chapter on evolution is that life actually started in the ocean. So we'll talk about like where life began and then how things have changed over time to give us what we have today. The next idea is the concept of interdependence in nature. This is actually one of the first concepts we'll talk about because the entire first quarter is basically based around ecology, and this is a key ecological concept. It's the idea that all living things on the planet have an impact on one another. When we look at food webs and we're examining how energy flows through an ecosystem, you'll see this concept again. So it's basically the idea that if you remove enough of the tiny pieces that make up that food web, the food web itself collapses. So all things on the planet are interdependent, meaning they like rely on each other to a certain degree anyway. The next concept is called the unity and diversity of life. It may seem at first like these two things are opposite, you know, unity tying things together and then diversity pointing out how they're different. But really, this is, again, one of the big concepts, the big ideas in biology that we'll talk about all year. Even though when we get to classification at the end of the year and we're looking at all the different things on the planet, you know, all the different kingdoms, all the different phylums that things belong to, and it truly is incredible how varied and different all the species are on the planet, but at some level there is definitely unity that ties them all together, whether we're talking about humans or reptiles or insects or plants, you know, whatever it is, there are certain common things they all share. So like they all have cells, they're all composed of DNA, they all contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen as their basic elements. There are certain unifying factors that tie together all the living things on the planet. But there's also this amazing level of diversity that we'll study as well when we get to classification. And then the last big idea is the concept of structure and function. And uh, to sort of narrow this down, there are certain common structures that are seen in many different types of animals. We'll talk about this a little bit more thoroughly in class with an example, but if we look at the picture down here, you can see that the same general pattern is followed with all of the bones of the different organisms here, whether it's a human, a cat, a whale, or a bat. They all have the same general bone pattern, even though the function of all of these limbs is different. So the function, say, for the, the human arm would be like dexterity. For the cat, it's weight-bearing. You know, it walks on those. For the whales, it's like front flippers kind of to like direct it while it's swimming. And then for bats, obviously their forelimbs are for flying. So the function of all of these are different, but the structure of all the limbs are the same. They have one big bone in the upper arm, two bones in the lower arm. For us, this is the radius and the ulna. And then you have lots of small bones once you get down to the end of the limb. So the interesting thing about this is these similarities all point to the idea that we have a common ancestor. All vertebrates, all animals with a backbone, like us and cats and whales and bats, all have a common ancestor, and that's why we have these common bone patterns that we see in all these different animals, even though the function of the limb is different. You know, if we didn't have a common ancestor, if we all came from different places, it would make sense that different functions for the limb would mean that they would all have different shapes and different structures to go along with them as well. The idea that they all have the same structure, even though their function is different, points to the concept that we all share a common ancestor. 
So again, this is the one that we'll expand upon a little bit more in class. But the purpose of this video is just to give you a brief introduction to some of the big ideas in biology. These are founding concepts that will follow us all year long that we'll keep referring back to. So as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in class.